Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Sometimes Frustrated Lover, and which right now, we're back in time. It's October 22nd, 1974, in which, like the last episode, in which I was really ragey and frustrated and ranty and just didn't have a good time with that. Um, I apologize for that, but still, it is what it is, you know. I some have some takes, but anyways. So we're back here, and we have Scott Strikes Down the AAA. Oh god, this effing sucks. Don't mourn organize. So we got that one because, as some of you guys has asked in the comments from the last video, do we have a liberal court? We do not. Uh, I'm I'm more more than certain. Every single time that a Supreme Court justice had passed away, we went with a liberal option. Obviously, it was Strom Thurmond. Um, he he pa well, yeah, I'll say packed the court, but maybe packed the court. I'm not really sure. But every time we had the option, I made sure to choose a liberal option. So we have what it says a moderately conservative. Uh, Group here. I wish it, I wish it was moderately conservative. It, it's a majority, majority conservative, right? It's five versus four. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. So I'm pretty sure I went every single time with liberal judges, but many of you guys did use or say use console commands, which I have done. So this is why I do not use Iron Man mode, especially for games or games like mods like TNL, because it really, I, I, I just want to make sure that we're successful in the end. I really do, and we've been doing really well so far despite my frustrations I apologize for that again just I don't like being frustrated especially after I work 12 hour days anyways so we have this one but so I use console commands I found the ID um, apparently you can find a whole lot of ID, event IDs in the game files I never knew that so from here on out from on the rest of the channel for at least TNO I should be able to find IDs for every single event especially when we're playing certain nations so for me personally this is not cheating I mean this this just makes sense for us Scottish Uptold AAA. Also, we did click on the other one just because now it did change minorities' status to equal rights instead of affirmative action. And right now, we do only have radical civil rights, but with upholding the AAA. Success, in a very long majority opinion, citing cases such as Strouder v. West Virginia. The Supreme Court has ruled that affirmative action our Affirmative Action Act is indeed constitutional. To quote the opinion, it is not unconstitutional for the federal government to intervene in the particular spheres outlined by this law. Moreover, the plaintiffs, having filed suit before any potentially discriminatory impacts of this law, have not shown due diligence in demonstrating how they and the constitutional order would be harmed. Already, large groups of activists are celebrating outside the Supreme Court as representatives of citizens for national equality look on with barely disguised contempt. Truly a victory for the forces of justice. So, you get better relations between us and the White House and the, uh, of course, working class. The influence of the working class goes up. Other America will likely more and more influence from them. The national mood will shift in favor of the National Progressive Party, increase the status of civil rights, and reduce some of the accumulated fatigue with Harrington's agenda. So, obviously, and you saw right here, we are radical civil rights went back up to revolutionary. So that's kind of nice. Other from Cicero, Illinois. Uh, call me a uh, bad word. All of you deserve to burn. God will judge you and find you a sinner. You people live, love, and word. Hmm, what does that mean? Uh, let's just toss that one. Cool. All right, so, like, like I said earlier, like, personally, like, I, I don't feel like that was really cheating. Well, like, we got screwed out of that one, but I've already said that enough times last episode, so I do apologize again. Like, I just don't want to have us fail, like, just, it's just, we were so close. We were so close to glory in the last episode. I was so disappointed. I was just, ah, uh, why? And, like, uh, like, I get it. Like, the Supreme Court, also, if you want to read some of these again, like, I know I've done some of these already, but, like, oh, that was the end of poverty. Cool. Um, if you want to read this one again, please go ahead, but... Like, it's one thing if we have the Supreme Court here and we can gauge their opinion whether they'll take up a case or take up a bill that we're trying to pass and say it's unconstitutional. Like, I get it. Like, the Supreme Court should have maybe a little bit more weight, maybe a little bit more in TNO, just because, like, in our timelines, they have a little bit of weight as well. So, I mean, it maybe would make it a little more frustrating so you can actually get things passed and actually said to be okay. So I'm totally on board if the devs want us to have more influence of the Supreme Court. I think that's cool, but it's not cool, at least in my opinion, that for just one act, for one bill, one thing to pass, that gets hammered home away to, uh, you know, just for one act. They, the Supreme Court, other than that, doesn't really do too much. I mean, sure, you can get impeached as Wallace and stuff, and I think maybe even as Harrington, but, like, still, like... If you want the Supreme Court to have more influence, then do it for more bills than just one. That's just, that's what I'm trying to get to. Words are hard. I'm sorry, I'm recording this at like 10 o'clock at night, so... <laughs> my apologies, once again. So, it's just... These are my thoughts. 
Obviously, some of you guys agree, some of you guys maybe not agree. It is what it is. Cool. Uh, but other comments include, someone said the Supreme Court might stri strike down the AAA Act due to fatigue. It's just because we have a slightly conservative majority in Congress. It is what it is. I'm actually quite cool. If if there were going to be a sub-mod for TNO, or maybe even the devs would come up with uh, the idea of, of would it be possible to actually pack the court, like increase the number from 9 to 11 or 9 to 13? Would that be an option? How would you? How would that radicalize people in America? Because you know, th throughout American history, people have floated that idea around. And I think FDR did it, maybe? I can't remember, but you know. You know, stuff like that. If, if the devs want it in the game, I'm not opposed to it. I'm totally, absolutely not opposed to it at all. Just... Just make it more uniform. Make more uniform. Of course, then again, the devs probably don't like it that I criticized them last episode, but... <laughs> There's a reason why the overall blues devs don't talk to me. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, that's why we love Equestria War devs. Anyways, anyways. um, Just going to put this here. Cool. Another comment was... So, yeah. Someone said, just go back in time to choose a liberal judge. I mean, I guess I could have. I don't know if it's random or not, if a Supreme Court justice dies. I know Nixon chooses one, and I think you get one more, but a third one, I, I'm not really sure. I can't remember, so... Yep, and that's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Bail out, you know. If you like to about both of the forces, please go right ahead as well, just because, like I said, the last episode we read as well. I might do stuff over here, but we'll see. I don't know, I, just, I wish there was more for Harrington. It's already 75, but I wish there was more. I kind of wish there was more. Uh, we're united, the party's on the verge of breaking apart. Eh, it is what it is. It's just a party at this point. No one cares about the far right anymore. All I care about Democrats and Senate NPP. Help the other America rise. They are dominant. Oh, and let's go ahead and lower, actually, the bourgeoisie. As well as the middle class. Actually, we can help influence these guys, the working class. Reassure, let's reassure the working class, because they dislike us. We're 27, which sucks. It is what it is. Whatever. How's our debt looking? Not great, but it's coming along. Poverty is still going up by 6.7 every single month. Current development status is... 20.01, which is not bad. Don't get me wrong, that's not bad, but still. Um, we're at 54, so I'm not really interested in that. 27 is still there. Oop, tertiary. Is there anything above tertiary? Academic Golden Age. That's not bad, actually. I kind of like that one. Uh, let's come over here. So, yeah. This campaign has been a little aggravating. But, you know what? I think most United States campaigns in Tino as are a little aggravating. Because it's such a balancing act. It's such a huge balancing act. Oh, also, if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. My apologies about that. So, yeah. <clears throat> but then again, it's hard to find forward to you know what you expect. Yeah, there's, a, there's so much support for Gus Hall. You know what? If Gus Hall is a candidate for the future, or even Yaki, I think we'll try to get him. I do want to do the next leader after this, so we'll see what happens. Also, there's another comment saying that I shouldn't be too worried about, like, the 1976 elections. I know. I shouldn't be. But I always act as if. We're going to continue. Act as if TNO is already out. TNO 2, I mean. TNO 2. So, I don't know. I just, it's... I We're playing a game in mod here, but, like, the 1970s for us, they're not that far away. I was like, thinking, like, oh, what could happen in real life, you know? Make it a little more fun like that. We're having real consequences here. And Italy still wants our faction, don't they? They still want our faction. How about you quadruple or triple the size of your industry, Italy? Schwarzkopf? Uh, taking back their empire. If you want to read about this again, please go ahead as well. Pretty cool. <clears throat> I'm thinking about helping out the NPP, but at the same time... Yeah, I'd rather support the NC NPP, so... 34 is not great. Hey, 28 is better. 28 is definitely better. I do want to help, out the, help those guys out. Uh, oh, that's good. Exhaustion is small. That's very good. Average influence, reduce influence of these guys again. That's currently down, which is nice. Go help out, reassure the working class, because it's not great to do, but it's not bad either. And we can only get points... Oh my gosh, it's .65 every single day. Italian desk, if you like to about the Italian desk, please go right ahead as well. Just so... Because we read it yesterday as well. We're just trying to help out the Italians here. They need help, you know. And do we need another place to build some cities? No. Oh, we've been about a new industrial, better... Or better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Excellent. Actually... What are we currently on? Innovative industry. Well, we've already maxed it out and gone up again. That's kind of cool. There you go. And... I'm going to get one of these. Why not? Because you can. For our health. Now we can do cool the lead. 
which I'm pretty sure I read this one yesterday too, so if you want to read about this one as well, please go right ahead. Thank you very much. But yeah, when in doubt, I, I, you know, from the, how much I play TNO, if you follow this channel, you know I love TNO. Like, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to do well. That's why I don't speak about any of the controversies they had in the past. So, I want to see them do well. I want us to do well as well, but like, just, I don't know, just, when you put a lot of stuff into it, it's just, you want to, you want to do well, no matter what. Man, words are difficult. Man, Borman, you gotta go to the doctor. I know you're a dictator, but you gotta go to the doctor, son. You not look, you looking like Darth Vader after he's been dragged through Mustafar and back onto the hospital bed to get, become Darth Vader, like, in his robotic suit. Bro, you need to go. You gotta find Sheev. You gotta find Sheev. He's kind of handsome. Somewhat. But not as handsome as the other guy named uh, Hadrish. Cool. Cool the lead, man. Cool the lead. Alright, so I don't think I read this one. Peace in our time, but let's see. It's tough to balance the need to support the talents with their desire for peaceful resolution, but <clears throat> we've landed on, on a compromise we think can accomplish both objectives. We'll send support to the talents, even military support, but it'll be in the form of instructors, medical units, logistics companies, and peacekeeping military police. No Americans will be on the front lines. The role will be shown both the value of our friendship and our commitment to peace. Iron Fist, Limp Wrist. Don't you hate it when you get all limpy? Without boosting Civ, we get 0.56. And if we boost, we get 0 0.07 more, which is just not that great. Oh, boy. Even if we cut construction spending down to zero, like, we would still have a massive deficit. Just the oil crisis, everything else that's costing us so much, like generous employment subsidies, which is worse than the oil crisis, actually, which is kind of weird. The free universal health care is really expensive. Police is not that expensive. Low pensions... Well, low pensions, huh? Public higher education. So, yeah. Everything has a cost. Everything definitely has a cost. So, 827, not great. They, is this going down again? Bro, guys. Why is it... Why is it 33? I'm pretty sure we raised them up, right? I'm pretty sure we raised them up, but... Alright, whatever. So, let's come back over here in Brothers in Arms. The U.S., like any other true son of liberty, does not stand alone in bringing freedom and prosperity to the world, besides the many exiled governments operating in D.C. and Ottawa. We have allies in both Atlantic and Pacific, not to mention our friends in Canada and our loyal minion, uh, strategic partners in the Americas, however. Our many friends and allies struggle greatly with equipment and manpower needs, as they were heavily reliant on undesigned technology and productive capacity from a now fallen European continent. And they are to work in concert with the mighty U.S. armed forces as anything more than cannon fodder. We must help them stay at our level in terms of equipment and, of course, training. Of course. Nice. 100 billion in an annual deficit? <sighs> Not bad. I love how, like, right now that everything's divided. We have LBJ, we have Bennett there. Strom Thurmond still exists. Yaki's just kind of hanging out. Gus Hall, and then, of course, Michael Harrington. So, it's... It, it's an, actually, there's just as so much support for... You know, you've really screwed up when there's just as much support for Bennett as there is for Michael Harrington. Like, bros. Dudes. Iron fist, limp wrist. Out of the seemingly endless debate that had been in South Africa, we expected our intervention in the Middle East to receive a certain level of opposition, but we certainly didn't anticipate that most of the dissent would come from those who wanted a more direct confrontation. It seems that our program of providing indirect aid to the Italians in the form of funding, material, and advisors become widely considered to be ineffective by the public and many in Congress. Supporters of the war have widely criticized the President's policy of keeping combat troops out of the Middle East and are calling for us to enact a policy of more direct intervention and support of our Italian allies by putting boots on the ground and accentuating the Italian forces with their own. This, they say, will make the war unwinnable for the enemy. Some are even suggesting that we that any other decision on the President's part would be a patently unpatriotic, a tacit admission that the American military isn't up to the test and that we don't give enough of a darn to protect the interests of our allies. It's strange that after the widespread anti-war sentiment from the public during the South Africa War, they've become so willing to send thousands more boys to die in the desert for the cynical and ob often... <clears throat> obtuse interests of nation-states. But, here we are. There's a lot of fear circulating that without deploying combat troops or intervention in the Middle East is doomed and with it, our economy. We can't allow our oil supply to be cut off, but it's a price we may have to pay for keeping that pipeline open worth it. Whoever controls oil controls much more than oil. Now 32... Oh, is, is it going down? Is it still going down? Dominant? Um, just reduce the bourgeoisie. 27. So 32 and 27. And we love the other America. Yeah, it's going down. Now it's 31. Why is it going down? It's just very small, man. They hate our forms. They hate our forms. The working class is betraying us, man. We're trying to do the best we can with these guys, but they just hate us. Like, bros. Bros. Down under. Some of our most important allies come from land down under where women glow and men are plundered. The Australians produce more. <clears throat> and then just kangaroos and big knives. They also make for fierce soldiers and show in both world wars. Let's review our plans to problem them. 
Uh, if you wonder about, uh, actually, no, I don't think I've read this one before. You know, let's, let's see. The office of the president could be a thankless job, but there are some, some, still some simple tasks to be found here and there. For example, playing host. President Michael Harrington beckoned the leaders of the OFN to his side in the Oval Office as they posed for a group photo. Smiling before the flash and clatter of the cameras, it was a family photo of the free world, from Canada to Central America to Australia and New Zealand. All smiles and merriment before the press were shooed out of the room for the real work to begin. Often the president would have to serve as a mediator. President Michael Harrington found himself motioning for the Canadian Prime Minister to stop talking over his Central American counterpart so that his complaints could get a fair hearing. The leader of the free world would ensure that the little among them was still among equals. But the easiest job President Harrington found was that of salesmen, tens of millions of dollars in technical assistance for Latin American agriculture, hundreds of millions of dollars for Canadian industry or the newer, never-ending reinforcement of Fortress Australia and the Rock of New Zealand. The precise sums President Michael Harrington realized never really mattered. It was the time of year as important to the OFN members as Christmas was to children. <laughs> America would be generous to its OFN family, President Harrington thought, for they could either stand together or they would die alone. Uncle Sam has a present for you. Lots of presents. And then the, uh, the docks of Darwin. Our first step in escalating our military aid programs for the Australasian region will be to help fortify and expand the port of Darwin, an important base for the U.S. Navy and our primary unloading point for the equipment and vehicles going to the Australians. We cannot leave it vulnerable to the Japanese. Of course not. We could never do that. Get that one and grab this one too, because you can. And you're going to grab some of this because you can as well. Very good. Down under, my friends. Lying down under foreman. Uh, I think I've read this one before, so there's nothing unique here. So if you're worried about that, please go ahead. Thank God for the Americans. While our GDP cre decreases. As long as it doesn't de decrease GDP growth, I'm okay with that. So, that's fine. The fact is a city. Australia is our ace in the hole when it comes to Southeast Asia, but in order for our allies to be of the most help to us when we're facing our foes, we need to boost our economy with an expanded industrial base. This will make it easier to produce supplies closer to the front lines of the co prosperity sphere so we don't have to make them here, truck them to the west coast, ship them across the Pacific. As an added bonus, it also help their nation grow as well, which will be good. New South Wales get a whole military factory. Our third eye. Though we have already started sharing most human intelligence on Japan, we have with the Australians. Previous administrations have held back on sharing certain signals and intelligence info with them, for fear the Japanese would catch on that we had cracked the ciphers. However, we believe the invaluable aid this would provide the Australians in keeping their country itself from the menace of the rising sun is worth the risk of the Japs finding out. After all, even if they change their cipher, we're obviously just going to crack it again. That plastic junk they call computers in Japan could probably be decrypted by an American computer, as small as your typical desk. Not bad, not bad. Where are we at for this stuff now? Uh, where is it? 27 still? Yes, all it's going down, man. That sucks. They hate our reforms. Whatever. Back to the Sydney. We love Australia here. Follow it up. Fortress Australia. Or Fort Australia. Australia's vast coastlines and thinly spread population makes it hard to defend them from a surprise Japanese invasion. We need to send fortification experts to help the Australians protect their island from such a scenario. A fort can lock down an entire country or county from attack and needs relatively little manpower to maintain. Or main. Or man. Something like that. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Ah, there we go. Come up here. If you just let time go on, you can get more PV. Who knew? God, I gotta play as Bennett someday. I really wanna play as Bennett. Mr. Molman Moneybags. Fire up the people. I guess we'll do that eventually. The OFN. The RDs may be hesitant about sharing the industrial bounty of America with its allies, but we know better. A stronger alliance means a stronger America, and so we must promptly strike up deals with our allies. We will give them foreign aid in exchange for them using it to buy American arms and equipment. Grow them more unified. Nice. That's always good to, look, good to grow a little more unified. Well, maybe not always, but usually it's a good idea. Especially if we have allies across the world. Look at that. Bourgeoisie, go bye-bye. Die. 125 million in new expenses? Is that it? We have billions in a deficit, but our northern brothers. Our friends to the north are our most important allies after the fall of Europe, bound by common language, culture, and origin. We stand proudly together in defense of the ideals once born from the Magna Carta in ages gone by. Sadly, their economy has struggled without the old Commonwealth trade. As their most important trade partner, we should help them out with cross-border investments and discounted trade deals that should get the old lion roaring again. As I established in the last uh, few episodes, we're making Fortress Center. we got to build a lot of forts still in Texas. But as you see, the Dakotas in Nebraska, and what is this one, Kansas? They got a lot of forts. They got a lot of forts there, so. Our old ally. 
New Zealand is a small and isolated country, and following the loss of her mother country, isolated besides from Australia and the US. Let's remind them that we will never forget their sacrifices during the last war and their importance in the conflicts to come. A tax credit will be implemented for industries willing to invest in New Zealand or companies to encourage trade and homegrown production alike. Um, a significant oil concession is very high. Can we get any higher? I think we can, can we? Maybe not. Maybe not. And we're currently we're at what? 93? That's not bad. That's really not bad considering where we're at right now. Uh, that's not bad. Tertiary schooling would be get better to get to. Where are we at for this? So going up. Uh, that's not great. Even though we're already done with that. Some oh, our new friends. If you want to put that, please go ahead. Oh, an ally. Semper Lieber. In a better world, America might have found itself flush with allies, a true champion of democracy and freedom that would stand unrivaled in the world. It's manifest destiny apparent to all. We're slightly far from the rule, but we can still feel pride in the alliance we've created. In 20 years, we have turned a loose coalition of traumatized survivors of the World War. Mostly former colonies cut off from their homeland and turned it into a true alliance of freedom fighters, mobilized and ready to fight tyranny, wherever may encroach upon our shores. Let's take a step back and review our proud past before t thinking about where we will take the OFN in the future. Nice. Alright, happy 76. Screw it. That's going to be t two years to do, but that's okay with us. Semper Liba. And how do we get more money to, for the deficit? Or for the debt? No, we didn't. Okay, cool. Nah, that's, that's a little better. 96 billion is a little better, man. That's a little better. Now we're below 600 billion, but whatever. So, United and ready, though. The OFN stands poised, ready like a tiger about to leap. The time to tear apart the co prosperity sphere is nigh. No longer shall we suffer the inequities of tyranny, the monstrous exploitation of d uh, despots. Who think they are living gods? Is let a call go out to all the noble sons of the free nations of the world. Rise for freedom, stand for democracy, fight for independence, give us liberty, or give us death. Yes. Add war support to every nation. Um, it's great and all, but... I guess, uh, is there no one we can elect after this? I want to see, is there anyone we can elect for the end of this? I'm not really sure, but we'll see. The hunger bill. Impose rationing. I wish I could, was, I don't know, just whenever TNO2 comes out, it'd be really cool to see, just because, um, I would like to see if, like, how we could slowly, very, very gradually and slowly, uh, lower the effects of the oil crisis. Like, obviously we can deal with it whenever we get there already, when it happens, but I'd like to see it happen some more. Like, maybe not more quickly, but just, just see what happens, you know. Um, alright. Fire the people. No amount of manpower is going to win a war the people are not supportive of the conflict, and the knowledge that a cause is righteous and the service of liberty for all mankind will allow our brave men to stand firm as the tides of the hordes of tyranny lap against their bulwark. Knowing the importance of our struggle, we should focus on efforts on launching an extensive pro-information campaign to fire the people. Only a million sparks light the torch of the liberty, and we will light those sparks in countless homes across the nation. Let us call the nation's foremost PR experts at DC to design our campaign. Nice. A little bit ahead of time, but that's okay with us. After this one, we're just going to go grab for 1980 stuff. I, I don't remember. Like, is there anything here at 19... Well, maybe not 1980, but, like, for this next year. Because we don't even have campaigns running right now, so it's just kind of weird. But then, community action. While we may include our m many moderates and even conservatives in our ranks, the MPP remains at its core progressive center-left party. In recent weeks, some more radical left-wing elements have begun expressing reservations about our media campaign and how its messaging is disturbingly bourgeois. To reassure them, we've set up a campaign reaffirming our commitment to local communities and public access facilities through donations to community centers, churches, local businesses, even the more moderate civil rights organizations. That we subtly encourage these places to put up some nice patriotic recruitment posters is just a happy bonus. But if you're going about firing up the people, please go right ahead. America will be whole again. We fight for America. The war led to many changes in American society, but one of them was the changes in the depiction of the Japanese in cartoons and posters. Over the course of the war, the Japanese were increasingly portrayed according to the classic Asian stereotype, short, buck tooth, and with bad eyesight. However, as the war started going badly for us, and especially after Akagi, the Japanese took on another form in the artistic zeitgeist. Uniform, brutal hordes, blood crazed rapists, and slavers who represent all the worst things about the tyranny of the Yellow Peril. Some of our party may balk at the racist connotations of these portrayals, but if we employ them strategically and subtly, and contrast it with the good Asians we fight to rescue, this can help give our commercials, the posters and films, the edge to really portray our fight not only as one against the illegal and unjust Akagi Accords, but against the vials of the tyrannies yet to go dawn over Asia and Pacific. The Japanese Americans may be upset at the government endorsing such portrayals, but can they really be trusted in the first place? A general reminder that inter internment camps should calm their loudest voices. Um, which is kind of weird to think about seeing as how we've literally just got affirmative action passed, but... 
I've heard that maybe Harrington might get a rework, maybe eventually, so we'll see. Aggressive recruitment methods. Our decision to not go all in on the draft right away has caused a shortage of volunteer personnel, despite the efficacy of our recruitment campaigns. Well, the mountain won't come to Mohammed. Let's send our recruiters into the high schools and colleges. Snag them early. We can also make it easier to attain citizenship through military service to attract the immigrants, and offer non felon criminals a chance at a community sentence in return for service. Let Uncle Sam squeeze this lemon for juice, even if it is sour. Yeah, yeah, if you're in high school watching this, the recruiters will come for you. They came for me once, too. And I was not that close to signing up, but I was somewhat there. So, they will come for you if you're still in high school. They will come for you. And even after after high school, they will still come for you. <laughs> I got really close to signing up. Anyways, really close. Crank up the draft. Uh, simply but the mere reinstu reinstitution of the draft policies using a relatively brief involvement in the previous two war world wars do not guarantee us sufficient manpower for a truly prolonged conflict of this type seen in South Africa. To say nothing of the potential mass casualties in a limited nuclear war, we'll need to dust off proposals of the Joseph Kennedy administration regarding mass conscription and expansion of the draftable age groups and adapt these policies to the modern age. That surely won't be popular, or more worryingly, it will increasingly and it will increasingly age groups that constitute reliable voting blocks. But if we want America to survive, we must be willing to take all the steps necessary to guarantee the survival of its military, even through its most brutal meat grinders, or master grinders. But I think meat grinders, yeah. Nice. Shells go boom. Well, that's what they're there for, right? Who knew that in 1976, America wouldn't have elections? I did. Well, maybe dead. I, I don't remember. Well, like, we'll finish up the focus sheet pretty quickly, so... But we're almost there, my friends. Almost there, and I do apologize once again for the last episode, but ready for war. After months of intensive campaigning and pulling the strings of industry, we're as ready for war as any nation has been since World War I. The pop has been whipped up into a frenzy, and war support is an all-time high, long lines stretching outside recruitment offices of young men ready to slap the jab. Many of the higher echelons of the party are worried that without mass mobilization of industry and fit draftees, we will lack the strength to fight a sustained war should the Pacific and Asian conflicts to come devolve into a full-on global or continental war. But for the more limited conflicts, we are as ready as can be. With the party, the economy, and the people united behind us, we just need to set the ball rolling, and with some luck, the Japanese will be running back to their home islands before it loses its momentum. Very good. Unlock decisions to rally all wings of the party. Stabbing students in the back. Whoa. Um, what is this? Tumultuous riots have exploded at universities across the country after President Harrington signed the Social Equity and Conscription Act this morning. The students are fierce that this act has abolished educational deferments and fear of being called up to fight in yet another unpopular foreign war. Moreover, they feel personally betrayed by the Socialist Harrington, who had previously argued for the right of dissent of for draft dodgers in the South African War. The National Guard has been deployed at many campuses to contain the protests, but they can't help to contain the rage the pro progressive students feel towards their former ad advocate in the White House. Well, look at this. So, upon signing the bill, Harrington tersely remarked, The bill reflects the bipartisan spirit of the National Progressive Party and our efforts to pull the synergy between the ideals of Patton and Pepper. I'm thankful to Senator Smith and Aislin for the willingness to compromise on some aspects of the SECA. I have no further comment at this time. Then he re then retired to the executive residence for the rest of the day with a bottle of scotch while D.C. police struggled to maintain the security perimeter at the White House lawn. No more fortunate sons. No draft exemptions. Well, that, that was a mistake to do, but we grow more unified... And Artie's look a little better than Northern States, which sucks, but... Do we do we just lose it there? Influential, dominant, disadvantaged? That's good. Keep, keep crushing them. Aid Italy with this stuff. Yeah, no, we're not going to aid Italy with anything. That was really weird. Okay. It is September, so we have a few more months until the, the new uh, year. We're on pacifism. Pacifism. Community outreach initiatives? That's not bad, but still. Rally the center. Consolidate more. Into our wing? Well, yeah, that's not a bad one to do, but obviously we don't need to do that anymore. Protect American interests. Yeah, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse, actually. Cool. Ready for a war, my friends? We're ready for a war. And if you want to build that, please go ahead. We will bury them. So now this kind of sucks that we have literally completed all of Harrington's stuff before even the next elections. Which I'm going to say is very weird. So, but I mean, that gives us an extra one political power every single day. So, like... I'm not sure what your average is supposed to be here. Obviously, it's not very good. I don't know. Why is it going down? Yeah, the fatigue is not great and it's small, but, like, still. You think the working class of all groups would like what we're doing here. But apparently, they're not. They're disadvantaged? Well, they're going to be more than disadvantaged. They're going to be disabled by the time we're done with the bourgeoisie. But still, like, bro. Um, so, we'll, we'll go all the way up until January, like, was it 23rd? For this episode, for this, obviously the last episode, to see what we can do, how far we can go. So, so we'll see, we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, overall, except for the last episode, I've had a lot of fun with this. Like, the last episode really just disappointed me. Like, I was so disappointed. As you can tell, if you watched it, thank you. Um, I do apologize for that, but like... It's been a fun campaign. Try to get Harrington. Killing off RFK. I did not want to do that. I did not want to kill off RFK. But, you know, we had to do that to do what we had to do to get Strom Thurmond, which I never played as. So, it's interesting to see that he's still a little bugged, maybe. Obviously, well, there's a lot of things still bugged in Tino. Some of it's pretty good, but a lot of it's still bugged. So, but, like, it was, it, it's interesting to see. It's just very, it was fun. Because there's so many presidents, and there's other sub-mods or sub -mods that will come out. They give us more presidents, like Ronald Reagan. Actually have a presidency for JFK. So, just, I'm interested to see what the community has, has come up can come up with, as well as the devs themselves, like, I, I'll complain about them a whole bunch, like, you saw me, <laughs> hopefully last episode complaining a whole bunch, but, I like Tino, I really do, I like it probably too much, <laughs> that's why I play it every single day, my goodness, we have so much manpower, we're still mobilizing, <sighs> beautiful, just, I want to see what's going to happen next, look at that, it's such a solid south, but in the wrong direction, nice, let me look at that, the entire west coast, all, Almost all of North New England, pretty much all the West as well, Southwest and South-ish areas. Not, it's pretty R and D. Who's here in it? Betty Friedan is a was Betty Friedan a real senator? I, I don't know if she was a senator, but okay. R D support is high, but M P P support is even higher. Not bad. Tennessee, we actually have quite a bit of political power now. So let's can we actually rally the center? Maybe. Doesn't matter, you know, we, uh, Yeah, can we rally the center? So grows a little more unified, which is not bad. We do get more war support. Um, diplomatic stuff, public landscape, it's on verge of collapse, so it's really low. I'm just looking here if we have anyone special here. Uh, George H.W. Bush, very cool. I mean, there was one comment saying I should play as him, play as Bill Clinton, George Bush Jr., uh, Ronald Reagan, maybe. Is Jimmy Carter a potential president in one of the submods? I don't know. Let's see. Wes Barnett, um, Care, Albert Gore Sr., Wendell Ford, cool. Grab some of the stuff too. It doesn't really matter anymore, but I still like to do it. So, on the verge of collapse. So let's open this one back up, and we'll yeah, we're gonna rally the extremists. Yeah, probably not. Oh, let's continue for now. I want to see. It's oh, it's almost. We're almost there. We're almost there. But at least we can say we got Hawaii back and the port. So, um, it's seventy-seven. So is. Joe Biden here? I'm not really sure. He's Delaware, right? There's Maryland. Delaware? No. Well, maybe he's not MPP. I'd be really weird if he was. But there's uh, a lot of these guys. I don't know a lot of these senators. I mean, most senators you never hear about. So. <laughs> so weird. Oh, there's Barry Goldwater. Look at that. In Arizona. Um, Bunker. New of course, Marie Newberger's there. Henry Scoop Jackson's there. Um, yeah, cool. Well, we're about there to see what's going to happen. Anything, maybe? No? Well, I guess not, my friends. My apologies for, I don't say wasting your time, but learning that there's literally nothing after the last election. But, hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, a subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. I apologize once for one last final time for my, my I guess, attitude last episode. But, I've learned a lot from it. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a tremendous, tremendous... Rest of your day.